But moving forward to a big topic, a topic that I've wanted to talk to you about for a couple of weeks now is the NCAA bubble for men's basketball that they're going to be setting up in Indiana in the Hoosier State, baby. The Hoosier State of basketball. That's why I've wanted to talk about it. I just think it's so fitting that they picked the state of Indiana. Yeah, I, I think this is great. Um, just thinking about last year and you know, the, the pandemic had just really kicked in, or at least we knew about it and knew exactly what we had to start doing right or, right before the NCAA tournament started. And you saw the tournament get canceled. And that's, you know, March is one of my favorite sports months. You, you always have, or, you know, even April is one of my favorite sports months. Because in April, you have the NCAA finals, you have the Masters, you have the NFL draft, you have the start of baseball. It's just, an, you know, basketball and hockey are kicking into late in the year and into the postseason. And you just didn't have that because something felt missing because you didn't have any of those things. And now that we know that the NCAA is going to make adjustments to make it work during the pandemic, I think is great. And they, they now that they know how to do this stuff, I think this makes all the sense in the world. So from what I understand, they're going to have six – different locations for games in Indianapolis and in the surrounding area. So you got Lucas Oil Stadium where the Colts play. I think they're going to have two courts there. Then you have Indiana University's uh, field house. You have an, uh, the Pacers uh, arena, and I think the Indiana Fever, the N M WNBA team plays there as well. Uh, you have another smaller field house. Forget the, I think it's the Farmer's Field House that's um, about 6,500. Then you have Purdue and Butler's gyms that are just outside of Indianapolis um, that are, you know, bus trips away from the city that, that teams and fans and, and folks are going to be able to go to as well. And then you also have the NCAA headquarters in Indianapolis. So um, I think it makes total sense to have it all there, have it in one location. You don't have teams jumping on planes after winning. You don't have teams jumping on planes after losing. They all get there. You know, I don't know if they're going to try to space it out when you're there for a few days. You know, they get tested and then they start playing. I would imagine they're going to try there earlier than normal you know if a team wins their conference tournament which i believe they're still going to have um in the in the bigger conferences you know I, sometimes it happens on a saturday or sunday i would imagine you're just going to fly out to indianapolis right after that not even wait and then get there get tested and then you have a few days before you play a game where you know guys aren't getting sick or or, or coaches or staff members and so forth so i think it's a it's a great idea to keep everybody in one place, and it's great that they can do this too. And it's great that there are surrounding universities that have these facilities where you can house all these things. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think this is a great decision. And like I said, especially picking the state of Indiana. I mean, first, you got the movie Hoosiers. You've got Indiana, right? The, the College of Indiana, the Bobby Knight, right? Reggie Miller, right? Uh, Larry Bird. I mean, the history of basketball. Granted, basketball was started right here, right here in Massachusetts, okay? that's We'll take that claim to fame all day long. However, though, Indiana's got a great history of basketball as well. So I think they picked a great state to have it in, if, in unless it was in Massachusetts, you know. But if they had to have it anywhere else, having it in Indiana makes complete sense. And then you brought up a great point where the NCAA headquarters is right there, so they can have their hands all over it. Make sure everything's going. Make sure it's going to go off without a hitch. You know, I think the big story is you're going to have 64 teams come in there, spreading them out, obviously, with social distance, but having them in different hotels. But I think this gives a chance for professional sports to go ahead and take a look because professional sports has said, hey, we cannot provide a bubble for our players. And I know it's a lot longer than just a few weeks, which the NCAA March Madness would be. So I know the NFL or NBA season would be a lot longer and it's more months. But I think this is going to go ahead and prove that you could possibly have a bubble with 64 teams for a few weeks and have it work out and, and, and have it probably work out without a hitch. You know, get all the games in, cut it down to 32 teams at that point. So obviously each time you're going to have less teams that are going to stick around. But I, I think it's a great move by the NCAA to bring March Madness back. I think it was something definitely, like you said, that we were all missing in 2020. So to have it back in 2021 is extremely exciting. I was really excited to hear this news. And I think it was smart of them to go ahead and announce it already to say, hey, we've got a plan. We've got a plan. We're going to get it done. We're going to get the tournament done. Play your season out. 
get yourself in the tournament, and, you know, we'll see you in March. And so it's great that they have a plan. I'm loving it. I'm loving that NCAA basketball is back. I know we're going to be start talking about it a lot more on this show. Some teams are looking really good. Jawan Howard has his Michigan team looking really top-notch. I watched a little bit of them last night. I believe they won the game. They were up by 20. I changed the channel. Wasn't too entertaining. But they were up by 20 at the time, and they're a team that was an 11 and a 1 team at the time. So they're playing really good. What's really crazy, though, about NCAA basketball right now is, though, is you got some powerhouse teams like Duke, Kentucky, that are not in the top 25. So we're going to have to see if they can crawl, crawl themselves back into where they belong. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this bubble come March in, in Indiana in the NCAA bubble, and I know we're going to be talking about it more. No question. And it's just we all love watching the tournament. We all fill out a bracket, and illegally or legally, we're betting on it too. So, you know, that will be back, which will be great. It's going to help the hotel industry in Indiana. Although I don't know how much of a – social distancing they're doing in that state but um you know it's going to help th those type of places that are that are struggling right now so they'll be they'll be getting some revenue there as well um but you know if anybody's been to indianapolis too it's a cool city i actually like indianapolis it's a smaller big city it's easier it's easy to walk around but it's not not it's not like right on top of you like you're in new york or um like you're in chicago or even boston where everything's very condensed it's a big city but you can you can kind of move around without going through this, all this crazy traffic and everything. So I think it's a great idea. Um, the thing is, too, that, you, you know, la not having the NCAA tournament last year had an effect on the NBA draft. I mean, we went into the draft. Everybody was talking about how this class isn't good. You know, there's not enough good players in this draft. Now we're seeing that they, they actually James Wiseman's really good. LaMelo Ball's really good. You know, we'll see what happens to Anthony Edwards. I think he's going to be good. Peyton Pritchard you know, is a good player. And I think guys like Peyton Pritchard and some other guys that we didn't see as much last year, we might have seen in the tournament. You know, a lot of times we don't – out east, we don't really see a lot of Pac-12 games. Uh, we don't see a lot of, you know, games from Arizona, you know, or, or California and some of those teams out there. So we often see those players in the tournament. We missed that this past year. So that's why guys like Peyton Pritchard go kind of unnoticed amongst fans – you know, across NCAA and uh, NBA football. And I think we're going to see guys, you know, in the draft that we're going to know a little bit better when they come out for the NBA draft because I think that's going to make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, we're going to see guys, you know, really shine during the NCAA tournament that we might not have known about beforehand. So that's going to be a lot of fun uh, this upcoming season. Any more final thoughts, Brandon, from the NCAA bubble? I think one thing is that you hit it big. I think it's definitely going to help the economy, especially of Indiana. I mean, bringing even in that many teams, right? You're going to have to house them, feed them um, for uh, at least 64 teams for probably two weeks minimum. Um, so, yeah, I think it will help the economy. And it's it's definitely going to help our country because, like you said, people are going to be looking forward to having March Madness back. Yeah, no question. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. We're obviously going to be looking forward to a lot of fun things coming up the next few weeks. But obviously, we got the uh, NFL Conference Championships coming up on Sunday. We'll be sure to be talking about those next week. But folks, we want to thank you for joining us this week. Been a lot of fun as always. Brennan, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can see our Twitter, Twitter handles at the bottom of the screen. Make sure you check that out. You want to follow us on Twitter. You also can subscribe to Comeback Sports on YouTube. Just type in Comeback Space Sports in that search section in YouTube. You'll find us. You'll see our pictures there. My picture's from like 15 years ago. That's fine. I look like I'm 12. It's all good. Um, and, and make sure you subscribe on, on YouTube. Also, jump in on the chat if you want to chat during a live show. Also, you can check out our producer, Ben Kudo, who does a fantastic job. Cuts Great up job. segments from the show. So you can check out segments by themselves or you can watch the whole show afterwards as well, folks. Thank you again for joining us here on Comeback Sports. We'll see you next time. Have a good week, everybody.